I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my latest set of reviews and stuff that I've been up to for this week. So I got quite a bit of an episode to watch, so most of it is just updates as far as what's going on as far as the media stuff goes, but I got a fun little um, Android app review to talk about. It's a little bit more detailed and intricate than the past few reviews, but I thought I'd share that as far as how I get the um, look and feel of that, the of or why I use that app for my home screen to create a very unique um, interface, and then I'll round it out with the um, gameplay update for Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic. So to start it off, I have continued to be watching um, The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live by... So in this case, we have most of the episode about Rick trying to have Michonne leave the CRM, go back to the community, take care of the kids, and all of that stuff. He's going to take care of everything from the inside, and he doesn't want uh, Michonne there basically uh, messing it up, causing trouble, and all of that. Because it feels like he's trying to work his way up the ranks, get into a position of power, and take things down from the inside. But he can't do that if Michonne is consistently there um, causing trouble and not following the rules. And then if he has to consistently wor or constantly worry about um, Judith and the kids and the community and all of that stuff. But of course Michonne doesn't listen and she continues to do what she's doing. So it kind of feels like... She's working at a, pro at a way to get Rick to come back with them and they'll do things from the outside. But Rick is trying to learn as much as he can so he has a better informed decision about how to take them down from the inside or at least get that echelon briefing where he learns about everything that's going on. So that way um, he knows um, exactly what they're up against, how to take them down and then to do it from the outside or something like that. So. We'll see kind of where we um, go in the next couple of episodes, but that's kind of where I think they're going is that Rick is trying to learn as much as he can first and then do take action. But Michonne is trying to do the opposite. It sounds like she's trying to not believe that Rick is trying to get rid of her or she knows that Rick is or she knows how Rick is and um she's trying to get him to understand that they can do it together they're there to work together and they need to do what they did before to take down the crm so with all that being said i'm still all in on the show i'm really enjoying it it's good to have rick back on the screens or back in the walking dead series and all that so overall good stuff uh next up i did have a chance to watch the latest episode of shogun so episode four the eightfold fence um, the show continues to be very, very interesting. So I think the first episode was probably a um, isolated incident where I thought it was the slowest of the episodes because now that we're getting more into the story, I'm getting more invested into the story, the different story arcs, all the different interactions with the people, um, that Black Thorn, Blackburn guy, um, and how he thought that he was making a trade for like a ship and his people in in place of him helping them tra or helping train the regiment in his ways of warfare but um which actually had the best scene in the episode for me where the his translator lady told him that yes we might seem like we're um simple farm folk and we're you know always bowing to each other but we do have a society going on we are you know reviewing and judging and watching you and how you do things and um there's a lot more going on than you think is going on so um overall it continues to be a good show so if you can get past the first episode then it's consistently getting to be a better and better show so definitely recommend worth watching it um for star wars the bad batch uh they actually had a two episode release this week so episode six infiltration and episode seven extraction so we actually have ultimately um rex coming face to face with wolf and um 
basically they're trying um, the ba um, the Clone Force ninety nine is trying to decrypt the data, find out what's going on, get more information from Crosshair and Omega, share that with uh, Rex and his team, and kind of explain like figure out how to get to Tantus, what's going on with the clones, try and rescue them, and uh, and all of that. And Rex and his crew from Tantus actually meet up with them, and Rex gives him the compelling case that. They can be good soldiers, but fighting for the Empire is not what they signed up for, and it's not what they expected. So, Rex, like on Rex's side, he's not disagreeing with what um, Wolf is doing, but their clones, their brothers, and what Rex and his guys are doing are what the Republic stood for. And Wolf, you know, does the same from his point of view as well. So, overall, very very interesting stuff. So I'm kind of curious to see what they're going to end with if they're going to finally. Uh, re like officially make it say like you know Tantus is a cl Emperor's cloning facility what the how the Emperor's role with the Senate scene is going to play into it and all of that stuff but this was kind of that continuing to be uh, information finding episodes so they're kind of trying to piece together all that information to get everybody on the same page and find out figure out how they can save their clone brothers or is the Empire going to wipe them out once and for all and be done with the clones so they can move forward from that distraction. Um, otherwise this week I didn't really have it, I still didn't continue watching um, Vikings this week but I did end up watching the rest of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies so I watched on St Stranger Trides and Dead Men Tell No Tales um, just because I wanted to catch up on um, Blackbeard, uh, the end of the Davy Jones stuff, um, the Fountain of Youth. Um, and then the Salazar stuff. Um, so as I mentioned with the original trilogy, once you're done with the whole Davy Jones thing um, and the heart and all of that, you can kind of move on to other stories. So that's where the Fountain of Youth comes into play, Jack's Youth with the Compass comes into play and all of that. So I definitely recommend watching them. Um, and that's why I think like what things like the Johnny Depp's trial and all that come into play to distract from these movies. But it feels like they're setting up these franchises to ultimately maybe eventually have an into you know piracy and jack sparrow and all that but it's nice to see all of these different movies to now fill in his backstory of um you know his younger years of piracy how he became a pirate you get to see in some of the films about you get to meet his dad as in, and his uncle and all of that so more films with that are actually super interesting and just to see exactly like all the pirates interact with each other and bring them together in these different ways to the point where I actually want to rewatch Black Sails because um, it kind of did that in a more serious in a more serious point of view where um, you introduce you know Long John Silver and um, Blackbeard and you know as Teach and um, all the different pirates of the era um, how they came up how they knew each other and all their interactions and stuff so maybe at some point I will rewatch it I did enjoy the show a lot so uh, maybe I'll add that on my watch list. So with that being said, for this particular Android app review, the app that I wanted to talk about is something called Custom Live Wallpaper Maker, otherwise known as KLWP. And what this does is it lets you create a live wallpaper for your Android home screen that lets you put together a whole bunch of different elements to do a whole bunch of different things. So let's say you want to have a solid color background that um, changes color when you have a notification or um, let's say you want to have it um, show the um, cover image of whatever you're listening to when it's playing but then a, another solid regular image or solid color when it's not playing something as simple as that you can have it do uh, all the way up to having animations a mix of different um, elements and a lot of different complex things going on at the same time so in the show notes for the um, in the, for the episode guide, I'm gonna have a video of my home screen layout where I kind of matched the Pocket Cast UI with the Windows Phone UI because I realized about a week and a half ago that the Pocket Cast UI is very much like Windows Phone, and it gave me the inspiration I needed to create the home screen that you see. So you can do things like at the top of the screen have an element for the date, and when you touch it, it opens a calendar. And then another set of elements for the current weather, so when you touch that, you can open your weather app. And then I have the weather forecast that refreshes on its own every hour, so you get the latest forecast. And when you touch it, you can force a refresh. So let's say you realize it hasn't been refreshing for a while, or you 
um, you're not sure if it's the latest weather, you can force a refresh to have it refresh manually. And then I have a media player, so whenever I'm listening to music, um, it'll pull in that the cover image for that um, song or track that I'm listening to. So in the video, it's um, I have my Fast and the Furious Saga playlist. So it pulls a background um, color for that image from the artwork for that song, and then it pulls in the track information, so album, artist, title, and the track time. So I can have that those controls easy to go. And then I can switch between music and podcast. Um, and that's one of the things that um, KLWP handles is that let's, if it'll automatically pull in all media. So whether it's music, podcast, YouTube, Spotify, whatever, it'll pull in everything. But if you want to limit it to specific apps, then you can do that. So for me, I have it limited specifically to um, music and podcast. So that way the controls don't get changed to other um, media. If I, you know, I'm listening to music and I want to watch a video that uh, my friend sent me or something, then it doesn't lose focus from that. So that's the media player. And then the next grid of icons is apps that I um, use frequently. So a uh, pop-up widget for my book, my bookmarks, my music player, podcast player, camera, photos, and all that, that different stuff. So this is a particularly useful element, which is similar to the other elements via an overlap group. So let's say you want to create your own material you designed icon with the, a color from the app icon in the background and the apps icon on top. You can do a simple overlap group using an icon pack of your choice, which I'll get to in a minute after I explain this, but you can do an overlap group that says um, pull the uh, vibrant or muted or dominant color from this image and make that the the color of the shape and then overlap that with the actual app icon so it's an automatically themed icon based on that app icon so you know green for my music player icon uh, for the background because that's the color of the icon uh, red for my pocket cast um, icon shortcut because red is the primary color there same thing for like this purple blue thing for disney plus yellow for google keep and things like that so um, all of that is handled directly within Custom Live Wallpaper Maker. Now, to, in order to do something like this, so let's say you want to use a custom icon pack, whether it's a 3D one, muted, crayon icon pack, or a line icon pack, or something like that, um, you can use an app called IconZ. It's I-C-O-N-Z-Y. So once you install that and the icon pack of your choice, you can search for the various apps that you want to set this uh, set up in this way. So you search for music or music Olay or Power Amp, Pocket Cast, Camera, Google Keep, whatever. Find the icons and save it in IconZ. And then in Custom Live Wallpaper Maker, it'll automatically detect that you have the app installed. So you go and say, okay, this, for this particular image, I want to pull a formula by linking to that image. It is a bit of a little bit of a linking website. Like it's kind of like HTML where you have to link to something. But when you do that, it'll automatically pull in that image. So for the color, you say, you know, pull in, create a uh, muted um, color from this bitmap image and it'll pull in the, uh, and then you uh, point it to that um, URL in icon Z. So it pulls the color. And then for the image, same thing. You set up the formula and say, I want this image to be whatever icon is tied to this image. So you can do it straight from icon Z or you can create a global variable to do the same thing. So let's say today you ha use one icon pack, but in three months you want to refresh and you find another icon pack you like, then all you have to do is change the icons that are saved in icon Z, link the global variables to the new icons, and then Custom Live Wallpaper Maker will update everything from there. So you don't have to change the background image and the icon based on how many apps you have. So in my case, I have nine. So I have to change the, I would have to normally change the variable, all those variables 18 times to have them all point to the right place. Instead, because I have local variables, I only have to change it nine times and it changes the rest of it from there automatically. And then I did the same thing for the footer where I have a few icons of stuff that I normally use, but I don't necessarily need big icons or I don't need a colorize or anything like that. And that was also kind of my way of matching it to um, the layout for Pocket Cast. So, you know, I have Gmail and the Google app and Teams and a couple of chat clients and a shortcut to lock my screen. So it doesn't necessarily need to have a, you know, a colored app icon or anything like that. So I put that in the footer. So 
um, from all of this, that's why I like custom live wallpaper maker quite a bit because let's say you do have a home screen or you're using a launcher that kind of works for you, but you want to create something that's more just you, more your flavor, you, um, or you want to have things in a very specific way. Maybe the media player you have a widget that you have for the apps that you use isn't something you like. Um, or your weather app doesn't have good widgets or whatever, you want to create something custom, then Custom Live Wallpaper Maker handles quite a bit of stuff like you can see. Um, and then for me, like for example, I don't want two widgets for my two media apps, so one for music, one for podcasts, or for, for podcasts. So the media player widget I ha have handles that both, and then I have a shortcut to those apps. So. It kind of resolves, it's like a mess of both worlds, it kind of mixes those two things together. So it's one widget for the media player, so regardless of what I'm listening to, it's pulling that information. And then I can switch between the apps accordingly. So, you know, think of it like if you're in Pocket Cast and you're switching between your feeds and the uh, Discovery tab or in, in your music app, if you're switching between all items or your playlist or something like that, it kind of bridges that gap to create a single widget and app shortcut experience on uh, i can save my space to have shortcuts to other stuff and um custom lab wallpaper maker has those various setups already going so you can have you know overlap groups if you want an image behind an icon or you want to overlap text over um a certain color behind it to differentiate between that and your wallpaper so much like the weather forecast where i have um an overlap group to have the color behind the weather uh, one color, but then I have stack groups so I can have the weather icon, the day, and the um, high and low temperature. So I'm mixing up a couple of things. I'm embedding things and things like that. And then even with the background image for the media player, I have it set with a formula so you can say things like, if media is playing, then pull the color from the cover image. But if color or if the media is not playing then change it to a solid gray color so um klwp can handle that automatically so you don't have to do very many things manually once it's set up you can set it and forget it and even for like at my app icons in the footer you can set up a color formula too so for example for gmail i can have it say i have it set to say if my gmail notifications are greater than zero meaning i have an email notification change the icon color to red. For Teams, same thing. If I have a Teams notification, change it to purple. And then for like WhatsApp, change it to green. So it has a formula set. And I also have from the icon pack I have installed, I have the um, um, WhatsApp green icon um, pulled. So it pulls from that WhatsApp green color. So the whole UI stays consistent with that icon pack. Versus instead of mixing and matching, so if you have you know highlighted, um, or you know like hot uh, like a hot pink icon pack versus a muted color icon pack, it's not really mixing that stuff up. I don't have to guess what shade of green WhatsApp is versus Google Voice or versus uh, my music player or anything like that. It on it just pulls from that app icons um, color scheme. So when I change. Um, icon packs or I find another one that I like, I can change those icons, change my global variables, and custom live wallpaper does the rest. So I definitely recommend giving it a try. Getting to the point where I got it is probably an intermediate level, so you may not get there right off the bat, but I definitely recommend playing with all the various different elements. So, you know, if you're setting a, a rectangle shape, play around with the height and the width or setting a formula in there to um, have it automatically detect the width of your screen so you can set that the rectangle to the width of your screen. Um, play with shapes and text and notification access for you know having notifications on your home screen and things like that. So once you get used to it, it gets really, really easy. Um, I say this is an, an intermediate layout because in the advanced layout, you can you know hide thing, hide elements, have more automated stuff, have more complex formulas for animations, fade in and fade out. Um, and a lot more stuff going on so you know you can navigate on YouTube and um, Google to find stuff that's even more complicated than this like to get to where my layout is is kind of, is not terribly difficult I know it's kind of a direct way of doing it it's mostly just for me but if you look at some of the stuff that's out there it's really awesome well designed complex and all that you can have complex animations 
and complex things going on. So for me, I like this kind of simple minimalist layout, but you can do a lot more than this. So it's kind of a stepping stone between what's there just to put stuff in your element screen and to a bigger world of custom live wallpaper maker. So that's all there is for that. So I'll have a blog post or link the blog post of um, how I got the setup and the icon packs and stuff like that. And then a video to, so you can see it in action, the color changing for the media player. Uh, I think I have a couple of instances where the icons lit up and stuff so you can see how that works. Um, so it turns you know red for Gmail when I have a new email and then it turns back to the white icon when I the one there's none so things like that so um, overall a very good app that I recommend and even if you like I said if you want something very very simple so even if you just want a wallpaper that or live wallpaper that just has um, a grid of icons or if you just want a you know a stacked group of text that links to your apps just to have a simple, a home screen layout for a quick shortcut to apps that you use, you know, like let's say you're always using your camera, your gallery app, Gmail, um, WhatsApp and SMS. You can literally just have a stack group of text with those specific words. You create a touch action for each text element and say launch app, pick the app and now you have a home screen that just does that and you can create something as simple as that as well. So with that being said, let's round out this particular episode with my update for Knights of the Old Republic. So I finished Manon. I was able to go through the whole Sun retrial and get him proclaimed innocent. So I was glad I was able to do that. I'm, I think I've only done that maybe a, less than a handful of times. So it's always good when I'm able to proclaim him innocent. Um, my quick tip for Manon, and that's already up on the YouTube channel via a short, is that Regardless of if you're going light side or dark side, when you're down in the Harakard station and the rift, do not use the toxins to kill the shark. Instead, destroy the base to save the shark. That way you stay on the good side of the Cellcath because regardless of when you're um, on Manon and you're um, throughout your gameplay, there's a vendor on the concourse that gives you un nearly unlimited parts, or at least it says infinite parts. So parts are used throughout the game for repairs and uh, purchasing things when you're in a computer and things like that. So regardless of how much computer you use and repair and your technical um, abilities of your character, having you know a whole bunch of repair parts makes it super easy for other parts in the game, especially if you go to Manon early on. If you're going to Manon later in the game prior to visiting Korriban and going to the Star Forge and all of that, um, it doesn't really matter, but I would still say stay on the Cellcat's good side because before you go to the Star Forge, I recommend going to Manon to bulk up on the number of parts you buy. So that way when you're on the Star Forge and you want to um, buy, build, or whatever Revan's robes, you have enough of those repair parts to make that purchase because like in this case, I have no computer and repair and security skills. So I'm going to need a lot of uh, parts in order to buy it. So I'm going to bulk up on that before I get there. But I always, for me, like, you know, by the time you finish repairing droids and accessing computers and all that various stuff, you can run out really, really quickly. It goes by really fast and before you know it, especially with low technical skills in the character. So that's why it's good to have that vendor handy. It's one of the only ones I know of in the game that has that because all the other vendors seem to have limited parts. You pick some up throughout the game, but they go by quickly, like I said, as you're playing the game. So I recommend um, keeping Manon, uh, keeping your access to Manon so you can go to that vendor, you know, or you know, you go to Yavin Station, sell off all, you know, whatever product or inventory you don't need, and then buy up a whole bunch of parts and med kits. So that way you're bulked up on all that stuff and you have enough to buy Revan's robes. Um, with that being said, now that I'm done with Manon and the Leviathan, I was able to initiate the Brotherhood of Shadows or Brotherhood of Shadow mod for Knights of the Old Republic. So I was able to talk to the Rodian on uh, Korriban and do the whole all that stuff on Tatooine and talk to the guy that double crosses you and then the Bith and all that to get on the Orion. So. Now that I've gotten to this, and depending on when you're listening to this, I'm either just barely start uh, doing the Orion stuff and talking to the captain, or I've gotten a little bit further into it, but um, it's nice to see a ship that looks very much like the Endar Spire, but not on fire, not being attacked, everything is in pristine condition. 
So pretty nifty thing there, but I'm super stoked to go through the mod to see what it's all about. Um, and I know it's had a past history of crashing a lot and having issues. Um, a little bit of issues on PC, but I think those are mostly fixed, but then the crashing on Android. So I'm hoping I'm able to get to that without issue, um, especially after watching the trailer that I guess you're able with the mod, you're able to play the Battle of Malachor that you only hear about in Knights of the Old Republic 2 and deal with the aftermath there. So I'm kind of curious to see if how I can get to that and deal with all that. But and even if I don't know, Bay of Dora is going to be involved or whatever, I'm still going to be surprised when that comes up or if that happens. But um, I'm really stoked to play this mod. So um, as of this recording, I've started that to uh, check out all of those quests and get more information to the past of Darth Revan. Um, to that end though, I'm, I'm going to do something special in this case where I'm going to keep adding those gameplay videos to the existing Knights of the Old Republic gameplay playlist that I have going on. Um, so you can have a full story from A to Z. So, you know, from the Endar Spire all the way to the Starforge and the Brotherhood of Shadow mod in between. But what I'm also doing is I've also created a play playlist on YouTube. So let's say you want to just follow along with the Brotherhood of Shadow mod and just watch that part. Um, I have a playlist to just or just for those videos. So I've created the pro prologue video. So that's kind of the starting point because even though there's some Korriban stuff in there, it's mostly just, you know, talk to the Rodian, get to the Bith and get onto the um, Orion ship to start the Brotherhood of Shadow mod. I've already gotten that title card and all that. So um, I wanted to create a playlist just to have its own and own encompassing playlist of the story for that. Um, I checked a while ago, I want to say last year, I never really saw a good high quality version of the Brotherhood of Shadow mod um, on YouTube. So hopefully this is, if I'm able to get through it, then um, hopefully it's a good playlist in high quality that everyone can follow along with and enjoy. But um, yeah, like I said, or long story short, that's kind of what I want to do is have it, uh, my own playlist for just for that mod. So um, you can follow along with just that with just the mod if you want but it's in also encompassing the full story so if um you want the full story you can do that or if you want just the mod then you can follow along with that as well so with that being said um like i said this was a super long episode a lot to cover so um that is all for this particular episode so if you have any questions comment feedback um updates questions whatever you can comment on this post on social media all of them are that i'm on are linked on the website at headphonesneal.reviews um, all the gameplay videos are up on the youtube channel at youtube.com slash patel n01 um, along with a link to the patreon so if you want to support the show get early access access to you know the podcast episode ad free version of it um the cover image for the episode for if when i generate it by ai and all of that stuff then you can support the show on patreon at patreon.com slash patel n01 and of course now that i'm thinking about it i never actually mentioned the um script or the prompt for this week's cover image so again it was with google gemini and it was a simple uh prompt a, a zombie samurai pirate in space so um overall a very funny and um, night or not funny but a good more Mortal Kombat-esque um, image for this week but that's kind of the prompt or that's the prompt I use for this week so um, there is that but that is all for this particular episode thanks for tuning in and until next time